Welcome everybody. How's everybody doing today? It's Adam, your man here at Worldwide Stereo and on our afternoon lunch and learn. Uh, today's episode I'm really excited about. It's going to be a fantastic show we have in store for you today. We have some real experts in, in, in speaker technology and just a whole hand in, in audio equipment out there. And I'm talking about Focal. We got Focal with us today. And uh, so they've joined us from France. Uh, uh, from Canada <laughs> and some different areas across. Uh, so happy to have everybody here. I'm going to bring them in so we can get this ball rolling. We already got a lot of people joining in and we have a little special announcement that you'll have uh, time to enter a giveaway. So just stay a second here. Let me get everybody in. Okay. How's everybody doing? Doing great. Hello. Good. Excellent. <laughs> great. Excellent. Friends, these are my friends from Focal. We have Chris, we have Nicholas, and we have Thibaut. And I'll say Thibaut and Nicholas both coming to us from France. And Chris uh, right out there in Canada right now. Uh, and so they are here today to help us talk about, well, we want to find out who is Focal. Uh, we want to kind of talk about the differences between uh, speaker materials and what makes Focal special, their manufacturing process, and all the offerings that they really have, which is really outstanding. Um, so uh, first I wanna let everybody get introduced themselves. Chris, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and what do you have at, what do you, what do you have at home, or maybe in your car? Sure, um, so again, Chris from Focal, I'm the North American product specialist for Focal. Uh, I am out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, yes, it's, uh, not snowing here, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, again, I've been with uh, with Focal for uh, just just over five years, and mm -hmm. uh, again, with that, uh, I guess what I have at home is that uh, I have all, uh, all of our headphones, including our Utopia, which is uh, amazing. Wow. Um, and then with that is that I also have a full Focal Utopia uh, car audio system. I've heard a few of those, and they're amazing. You have you have Utopias at home. I got the listens here. Come on, you got You should have let me borrow them or something at least for the uh, show. I mean. well, well, we'll, we'll plan ahead next time. <laughs> all good, all good. Thank you for uh, for being with us today, Chris. Well, thank Nicholas, you how long have you been well, with Cal, and uh, what do you have at home? Well, uh, it's been 16 years for me uh, working at Focal. So I'm basically working. Uh, um, Part time with the R and D team to work on the new products, uh, sound tuning, voicing, and part time with uh, our partners to let's say go uh, into details when it comes to product training and so on with Chris and uh, and you as well. So at home, I currently have a Canta system, a multi channel system, five point one, uh, along with. Astral 16 and uh, Unity uh, as a streaming device and amplifiers as well. That sounds like a phenomenal system. I mean, Focal just it's... got into the. Uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> what can I say? It's an amazing system. Uh, yeah, the Astral, that's uh, one of your new surround sound receivers that you have, your AV receivers. Uh, the streaming device you were talking about is from Name as well as Focal's with Name Audio as well. There's a partnership there. So uh, that's that's uh, great stuff. And the Conta speakers will go over those a little bit and what makes them special uh, in the future. So. And uh, I want to thank you for the trip that I was on. Nicholas trained all of us that was yeah. there. I uh, took a lot of notes. I was a stenographer. I was taking tons of notes. <laughs> I still have them and I reference them still today. So thank you so much for that. Great. Thanks, Adam. And, you know, yeah. Thibaut, you're, uh, yeah. I, remember be I remember being in that room there. What a, that's, yeah. is that, that's your yeah. system, I guess? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's my living room. Actually. <laughs> no, I'm just in the yeah auditorium in the, the big auditorium we have in Focal with the Grand Utopia behind me. So yeah, it's pretty pretty nice here. So uh, for my part, so I'm acoustic engineer and I joined Focal uh, four years ago, roughly. And um, yeah, working in the home division, so for hi-fi product and integration as well. So well, in terms of system, you see, I'm pretty well here. So. <laughs> Part of, I mean, a big part of my home, my home is uh, just Focal, so I'm enjoying system right there. So, very, very yeah. nice. <laughs> so we already have a few, uh, few questions coming in around, focused all around the same question, which is, I've always pronounced Focal wrong. So we got, <laughs> we got the guys here. So let's, 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 let's settle this once and for all. How do you say it? Go ahead, Chris. It is Focal, not Focal. focal. 
not focal, focal. Okay. All right. Now that we've cleared the air. All right. <laughs> uh, oh, we got a lot of people on here. See, look, we got some comments. Focal rocks. Love you guys. Thank you. Uh, we got Frank tuning in from Ohio. What's going on, Frank? Oh, my guys, remember Mario? He's out there saying hey. Oh, hey, Mario. Yeah. <laughs> So, moving right along, I want to first announce that we have a giveaway. Focal was generous enough to do a giveaway for us. And you have, we'll put the link uh, in there to sign up for it. You have until 1250 Eastern Time to get in on that. And the giveaway is right here. It's a full Focal core system giveaway, a 5.1.2 uh, system. So, you have the new Focal Towers. All right. Hey, there's a good looking guy. There's a Focal Towers uh, with the Atmos toppers built into them, some bookshelves for the rears, the center channel, and a matching subwoofer. So this is an incredible value, guys. Get in on this if you haven't already. I think we're almost up to 12,000 entries somewhere along that line. It's insane. So get on that right now, and you have until 1250. I'll be announcing the winner live at the end of this show. Okay? All right. So now let's get into it here. This is exciting. Um, I want to start out, Chris, if you could like talk about Focal. The, the history of Focal is great. Worldwide Stereo has been established since 1979, which I believe is the same with Focal. So we've been in business about the same amount, exactly the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. And it's it was really interesting for me. I was able to, in 2018, guys, go on a trip to Focal. And I want to show you some of those pictures later. But to learn about everything that Focal does and how really special they are. So Chris, if you could, I'd love you to just talk about Focal and, and the history of Focal and what they bring to the table from, from all avenues. Sure, well, um, as, as you may know from my, from my colleague's accent is that we are a French, uh, a French company out of France. <laughs> um, and as you mentioned, we were, you know, we were, we were founded um, by, our, by our founder, Jacques Mahal uh, in 1979. So again, last year was was a very big year for us, uh, being that it was our 40th anniversary. Just you know, along with you guys as well. Yes. Uh, um, with it is again, we uh, you know what makes us very unique is is kind of our our mentality is is that we we don't do things just to do things. We do it always for purpose um, mm -hmm. and always for uh, for the musical gain of of, of the product itself. Um, one thing that's, that's very unique about us is that you know we are we are uh, I, I believe we're one of two companies in the world that is fully integrated with the conception of music. Um, you know, right from the engineering side, uh, where we have our pro audio products and pro audio headphones, um, all the way to the reproduction side, which is you know includes you know our our, our floor standing speakers, our car audio product, mm -hmm. our our pro you know our, our high end headphones, um, and then also our custom integration product. Uh, so you know we are very diverse in every every vertical channel. If I could just stop you real quick, you mentioned Jacques Maul, uh, Chris. A lot of people out there may know Focal under a different name. Uh, right. So originally, uh, the company was founded under. Uh, well, we we really had two companies. Uh, we had we had Jam Labs, uh, which was our box speaker manufacturing, and mm -hmm. then we had Focal, uh, which was our raw driver side of the company. Got it. Yep. So I, I remember that from my training. Always, you know, my my dad would always talk about JM Labs and JM Labs and 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 the name Focal. So it's good. What when did that transition happen from JM Labs to just Focal? Um, I, I have to really think about exactly the uh, the timeline, and yeah. maybe one of my colleagues can can help me out with the exact Phone time. Friend. I would say uh, more or less eighteen years ago. So there we go. okay. So. You know, I mean, uh, and the fact was is that we, we moved from Jam Labs to and Focal just to Focal. Um, you know, there's there's a couple of stories out there of exactly why, um, you know, why it was changed over. Uh, one one of them being is is that you know uh, there was a, a, a time period where where uh, Jacques had overheard a couple of gentlemen talking about the Jam Lab speakers mm -hmm. and talking about how great they were, um, but. They, they also mentioned that they could be that much better with Focal drivers in them. And right there, he felt that, uh, you know, he felt that uh, Focal had a better branding. Uh, okay. You know, so that was that was definitely one of the changing points. Got it. Nicholas, I don't remember you telling me that. That's a, that's a nice uh, tidbit there. I wasn't aware of that one. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, it's it's confusing. <laughs> with um, with everything that Focal does, you mentioned like the headphones and the the, the home speaker line. They you even do outdoor speakers and. Um, Again, my space here, I personally have some of what we call the custom integration speakers or speakers that go in, you know, in the walls. And um, they're just I think the the whole lineup has a very similar design to it, which is which is great. And uh, we'll have Nicholas get into that soon. But it's it's awesome to have. And, and with Worldwide Stereo and Focal to have the partnership because we're one of I think the only one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the U.S. to have everything that you do under one roof. Like we have your speakers, we have your in ceiling, your in walls, and your and your uh, uh, the headphones, and then of course we do the car stereo side of things too. So we really were very well represented by Focal. Oh yes, and and I, and I believe you guys are maybe one, the only one actually that, that actually carries every every single vertical channel that we that we develop. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, if you want a great experience and, and 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 demo, we can certainly go deep on our showroom floors once we get back to being open. <laughs> <laughs> We're all here virtually for you right now, though, so we can certainly all help you out. Uh, let's see. The audio is working. I was just seeing if I thought there were some glitches here. Uh, sometimes, guys, sometimes out there, the YouTube feed is a little bit more reliable than the Facebook feed. Just keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing about these lives, everybody, is that there is a 30-second delay. So if I asked you to type the number one right now, in about 30 seconds, we would see number one start coming. So don't worry if you don't hear us get to your question right away. We will get to it, but you do have a great cast here uh, to ask any questions about speaker technology. So thank you, Chris, for letting us uh, talking about the uh, the Focal history. That's great. Always good to hear that. Love that story. It's a great story. Uh, moving on, our next subject I really want to get into here, Nicholas, and this is going to be the uh, the, the nitty gritty here of, of Focal, and, I, and you speak so well to it, and I learned so much from you. But I want you to, the, I want to tell our folks here, when you're building a speaker, what are the kind of things that you, you want to consider and think about? What What is the job of a tweeter and a mid-range? And there's two-way speakers and three-way speakers out there. And um, and then when you get to it, then I want you then I want to focus in on what Focal does specifically, like in their tweeter and their designs and stuff like that. So why don't we why don't we tell our everybody what what are the challenges in making a speaker? What's why is it so hard? Right. So. Uh First of all, Focal is a driver manufacturer uh, to start with. So we are manufacturing drivers, developing drivers in-house mm -hmm. 40 years now, uh, which uh, allows us to um, come up with a very specific approach. Uh, we are, let's say, at the exact opposite of uh, um, some uh, brands uh, that are, let's say, very mass market oriented, we are much more um, focusing on some quality, meaning that our manufacturing approach, when it comes to the manufacturing facility at some point, mm -hmm. all the machines are developed to be able to manufacture maybe 50 drivers of this type and then switch to 50 drivers of another type in less than five minutes or so. Uh, the IDE is basically when it comes to product design, uh, you have two approach. The first one being, okay, I can look for drivers that are available in the market, and then I will integrate those drivers in my speaker. However, those drivers have never been developed specifically for this specific speaker. I mean, again, depending on the size of the speaker, mm -hmm. uh, you will have to uh, come up with something extremely specific because Obviously, the cabinet side, uh, size and volume uh, already have a big impact on the drivers themselves. Uh, you will have to function the driver uh, components, uh, maybe the surround, the spider and so on, to uh, match your uh, speaker design. So this is the first point. Here, okay. uh, when we design a product, uh, we design a new product from scratch, meaning that we check in a case of, let's say, a freeway design speaker, do we yeah. have the perfect speaker? Do we have the perfect mid-range? Do we have the perfect base driver for this product? If yes, that's great. If not, then we will develop a specific one. A good example is uh, at Focal, we probably have maybe 20 different drivers made of uh, 6.5 inches with W cone. They look the same from the outside. Yeah. However, in they are totally different. 
totally different boy spoil, different speeder, different surround and so on. Because again, uh, maybe the housing, the, the, the cabinet volume inside will be different from this speaker to the other one and so on. So that's one of the key points. Uh, first thing, we develop everything from scratch to make sure that for this specific project, we will come up with the exact drivers uh, to match our expectations. Which, at the next step, uh, allows us to come up with a very simple crossover design, which is extremely important. Because here again, you can come up with uh, drivers you will get uh, from an external supplier and assemble in your cabinet. Then, obviously, those drivers are not 100% correct depending on the result you want to achieve, meaning you will have to design a pretty complex crossover to correct some problems when it comes to the frequency response curve of every single driver at some point. Here we are doing the exact opposite. To start with, we designed the proper drivers for this project, and then it allows us to go for a very simple crossover design. And in audio, like in many industries, uh, less is more. The less components you have on the um, PCB, on the crossover, the better will be the sound quality of UCB. So that's basically the core idea behind that. Uh, yeah. At the end of the game, um, Differences are massive. Uh, we have exclusive technologies that allows us to reach stunning performances. You are talking about uh, tweeters, mid-range, and bass drivers. They are all uh, totally different. Meaning, a tweeter, you will probably ask the tweeter to reproduce up to 40 kilohertz, meaning you will ask the tweeter to move back and forth 40,000 times in one second. Uh, meaning that here, <laughs> Challenges you have to, to fix, huh? like your mobile equipment must be super, super light. If not, you will never reach 40 kilohertz and you will yeah. lose a lot of details when it comes to sound reproduction. Yeah. On the other side, of the base driver, you are asking to move a lot of air from the driver. So the driver code must be super, super rigid. So let's say tweeters and, and sub uh, base drivers are the exact opposite. And we have technologies, proprietary technologies, to make the most out of those two different worlds uh, within the same products at some point. Yeah, I remember that from the, the the tour that we took, which was fantastic. Just looking at all the different, even even though it's the same looking driver, like you talked about, it's it's completely different. Every speaker's uh, driver that's in there, which was fascinating to me, is is different, even though it may look the same. And I remember thinking to myself, I said, "Geez, well." That's going to take a lot longer to make a speaker, doesn't it? And you're like, well, yeah, it is, but it's the right way of doing it. And it's it's solving most of the problems and making a speaker at the driver first, so you can use minimal electronics, like you talked about. And it's just a really, really great design. Yeah, that's it. Basically, here the idea is a bit like in the car uh, industry. At some point, uh, you can end up buying uh, a car which will more or less look a bit like the, the same one you see in the, the racing uh, and so on. However, the racing one will have an engine specially designed for that car and so on. Mm -hmm. And this is the approach we, uh, we follow, basically. Yeah. Everything is uh, fine-tuned and specially developed product per product at some point. So a big question that I get, Nicholas, I'm going to throw it up here and then I'm going to uh, give you a picture to help you out and describe it is this. And Keith asks, so why the inverted dome tweeter as opposed to a traditional dome? Uh, I get this question a lot and I want to put this up here to help you talk about it. And Keith, I don't mean to put your uh, picture away here, but we can't see the graphic as well. So I'm going to just go right there. And <laughs> no worries. All right. Okay. So uh, first thing here, um, Tweeter, uh, um, woofer, or bass driver, mid-range, whatever. Uh, in uh, the audio world, uh, you look at a bass driver. A bass driver is using, in a way, a kind of inverted dome, right? Uh, it's an inverted cone at some point, huh? yeah. which is the same design tweeter. The reason behind that is, number one, uh, a question of mass. Because, again, mass, especially for the tweeter, is the enemy. Why? Because if your mobile equipment, so in this case, let's say, uh, the dome, the voice coil, and so on, uh, are too heavy, you will never be able to reproduce high frequencies, and you will lose a lot of details when it comes to uh, reproduction of harmonics. 
which makes the difference when you listen, as an example, to a guitar. Uh, a guitar reproduced through uh, an average pair of speaker and the high end pair of speaker. With an end pair of speaker, you really feel that you have the guitar player in front of you. Uh, the reason being that it's all about the harmonics that the drivers are able to reproduce. So those tiny details at the end make a huge, huge difference. Reason number one, again, is due to the mass. And here you can see on this uh, drawing uh, the main difference when it comes to the voice coil to, to start with. Huh? On the yeah. classical dome, you can see the voice coil is coupled to the dome on the edge of the dome because that's basically the only way you can pull the, uh, the voice coil to it. Um, the problem here is your voice coil is pretty big, means that it's pretty heavy compared to on the inverted dome side. Then you can see that the voice coil, even if we have the same amount of copper uh, on the voice coil itself to allow a proper uh, power handling uh, to reach ISPL, the voice coil is way smaller, so we save already a lot, a lot of mass. Yeah. Also, on top of that, we have a very precise manufacturing process in-house. You saw that, Adam, when you visited Focal. Mm -hmm. uh, the driver manufacturing and assembly, uh, the gluing process behind the voice coil when we assemble the voice coil on the dome is extremely precise. There we can uh, precisely control everything uh, down to very, very low uh, and, and thin um, glue mass control. So that's another big, big, big benefit because here, thanks to this manufacturing process, we are sure that Twitter number one will be the exact same than Twitter number 49, as an example. Right. This is another big benefit when it comes to uh, the, the speakers and the drivers themselves. Uh, since the manufacturing uh, precision is extremely high, the consistency is super impressive. Another good example in regards to the consistency is the uh, uh, headphones manufacturing process in house as well. It's quite stunning. Yeah, that was amazing. I'm seeing the headphones being made. Um, and you talk about mass too. I mean, having the inverted dome tweeter and, and the voice coil being smaller is important too. Yeah. But one of the reasons that you choose your material beryllium is because it can be so light. Isn't that right? Exactly. And uh, here it's another point uh, we use on our high-end speakers like Kanta, Sopra and Utopia, pure beryllium inverted dome tweeter. Reason number one here is because beryllium is basically matching the three key parameters we uh, love in the uh, tweeter dome or Wufacon design, which is super light, mm -hmm. extremely uh, rigid to avoid cone distortion when the cone is moving up and down mm -hmm. uh, because it's super rigid. And the last one is basically the damping. Beryllium is achieving a super, super high damping, meaning that you have no sound coloration when the sound is reproduced through the tweeters. I'm yeah. sure that happened to uh, some of you guys. Sometimes you listen to a pair of speakers and the singer sounds like a bit like that and uh, it's mm -hmm. basically due to a lack of damping or a, a pretty poor damping at some point. Huh? And yeah. the benefits uh, I would highlight on the uh, inverted dome tweeter is the uh, sweet spot flexibility, which is super important. Mm -hmm. Not only extremely precise when it comes to uh, the stereo imaging precision of the center image and so on, but on top of that, uh, since the curvature of the dome is less than the classical dome uh, tweeter, the directivity is way less, so uh, it gives a much more flexible sweet spot. So your neighbor, let's say, if you are in the sweet spot and you have a neighbor next to you on the right or left side, will have almost the same experience than you because here again, uh, the directivity on a, of an inverted dome tweeter is extremely low compared to other uh, tweeter technologies. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly something to, to hear uh, on the showroom floor when you hear an inverted dome tweeter and beryllium specifically. It's 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 pretty nice. Uh, I want to go into the the uh, other is that we have we have that in 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 almost every actually in every division. So we, we oh, yeah. use beryllium in, in not only our home products but are also our pro audio, our car audio, and even our high end headphones are using the beryllium. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the Utopias and the uh, Stelias, yeah. uh, they, yeah. they both have the beryllium in them too. Um, so this is a, a picture here of one of your most famous drivers, the W Sandwich Cone. Um, 
and I usually describe it to people, it's like an ice cream sandwich. So, but uh, I don't know, that might be a little too basic, but it seems to get the point across. It's, I think so. I mean, that's and you're, you know, you're the I'll vanilla layer them. is really what, what differentiates your speakers, you know? So let's talk a little bit about this design because this is really, this was really cool. I actually saw these speakers being made and I'll put this slide up for you. There's a flax driver. That's the F sandwich going right. there. Um, but here's a good yeah. kind of breakdown. So why don't you describe this for us, Nicholas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, um, this is something which is part of the focal DNA. Once again, um, depending on the driver types you want to manufacture, you will look for totally different ratios depending mass rigidity and damping. Mm -hmm. Let's compare two things, uh, mid-range driver and the base driver. Mid-range driver, you will ask the driver to move maybe up to uh, 5,000 uh, times per second. So your mid-range driver uh, needs to be a bit like the tweeter, pretty light. And the mass must be very, very low in order to make that possible. Uh, on the other side, base driver, uh, mass uh, is a good thing because it will allow your driver to reach super low frequencies. Mm -hmm. So mid-range, you are looking at two different things. And the benefits here with this composite technology, if we look at the WCON right now, is basically we are combining two raw material glass fibers front and back, and in the middle, a composite foam, which is called Roacel. Uh, first of all, if we uh, talk about the Roacel foam, this is a super interesting material because, first of all, it's already quite, quite rigid, and it's extremely light because uh, I would say uh, over 85% of this is made of air, and uh, it's light, and then air is also a very good solution to damp the sound inside. So it's great to achieve good damping and rigidity, which is already quite high. So there, depending on the amount of damping we are looking for, we will choose different thicknesses of Roacel foam. The more damping we want, we want the, 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 the more thick will be the, uh, the Roacel foam at some point. And on the other side, if we want to make the mobile equipment, so the, the cone in that example, uh, as light as possible, for some mid-range, as an example, we just put one glass fiber uh, on the front in order to keep the mobile equipment as light as possible. On the other side, when it comes to a base driver, a base driver will, will move way less per second. Maybe your base driver will stop working uh, and... Uh, at 200 hertz at some point. Uh, however, it moves a lot uh, in regards to the displacement of the cone. So your base driver must be super, super rigid. Yeah. Which is the reason why on the W cone base driver, we can use lots of glass fiber layers on the front and the back in order to uh, bring a super, super high rigidity in order to avoid any cone distortion at some point. So again, depending on the type of drivers we want to manufacture, uh, we can act on the amount of glass fiber layers we will use front and back to fine tune both mass and rigidity. And then we can work also on the thickness of the raw cell foam to fine tune damping and rigidity as well. So this is an extremely interesting technology because with two raw materials only, you can fine tune the parameters between mass damping and rigidity depending on the driver type you want to achieve. And and my takeaway when I saw these being made was just the the, the craftsmanship that goes into it because everything is done by hand. I mean, these, these people yeah. are putting this on, like you said, like by hand. It's not, there's very, very minimal machines or even just precise machines just to hold things in place so the right amount of glue can go down and all that. So, um, and, and it was just fascinating to, to see that. And I held guys, I held a piece of that row cell material. Um, and it feels so thin. You feel like you could break it like a saltine cracker or like a Triscuit or something. It feels like it could break, but you really can't break this stuff. It's so super strong. So it's kind of a, it's a fascinating material to, to play around with. Um, there's a question that came in here that I want to I wanna speak to. Any recommendations for tube amplifiers for stereo system to go well with Focal speakers? Thank you, Worldwide Stereo and Focal. Um, the really cool thing about these speakers is their efficiency. Um, most high-end speakers that you get into, the efficiencies are very, very low. Now, efficiency is a rating that tells you, you know, with so much um, 
power, excuse me, so much uh, with one watt of power, uh, you, how much volume you get out of the speaker. And we, we typically see speakers in like 87, you know, or 88 dB, 80, you know, that amount of sound. And to put that in perspective, you know, a concert, a good concert is about 110. But most Focal speakers, I think almost all Focal speakers are over 90. And in some cases in 95 and 96 dB efficient, which just tells you that you can use an amplifier um, a modest amplifier and still get great performance out of these speakers. Now, that's not to say that you don't need to spend money on electronics. I'm just saying that, you you know, if you have that budget and you're saying, man, I should, should I get the better speakers and, and go down on the amplifier or should I get the better amplifier because I know the speakers are hard to drive, always get that better speaker because that modest amplifier is still going to do great things with the Focal speaker. Um, as far as a tube amplifier, uh, if you saw my uh, unboxing video on the Macintosh MC901 amplifier, which has a 300 watt tube amplifier to power the highs and then a 600 watt solid state amplifier to power the lows, that's that's quite a great amplifier to power some of these Focal speakers that now in the Utopia line do have bi-amping or bi-wiring uh, capabilities, which is really fantastic. So that's how I would answer that question. Okay, so moving on to, we talked a lot about the materials that Focal likes to use in their speakers, which is just awesome, uh, and the beryllium and the Roacel and, and the flax material as that, again, that vanilla layer in that ice cream sandwich that we like to talk about. Um, the cabinets, too. You have your very own cabinet factory uh, that I was able to see, and maybe this is a good time to just kind of roll into. I want to show, uh, share with everybody here. Let me just get it ready to go here. Whoops. There we go. Um, and we'll pop it up on the screen. So I mentioned we got a chance to go to Focal and, and see a lot of things there. And the, uh, I have some of the pictures here of going into the factory. Now, hey, that room looks familiar, right, Tebow? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we got to hear those beautiful, beautiful Utopia, Grand Utopias in that same room. And that room is really acoustically pretty much perfect. So to give you guys an idea of how tall that speaker is, I'm on a good back day, I'm about six foot three. So it's, uh, it's quite a tall speaker. Um, this is cool. You may not know, guys, the, the Utopia speaker on the back, it's adjustable. And this was a, a video here of that actually happening. So you can see Nicholas right there. He's cranking up the speaker and you can change the pitch. Now, why, do we, why, does, why is that important, Nicholas? Well, basically, on the uh, Grande Utopia, you have uh, an adjustable focus time, meaning that you can adjust the... Uh, angle of the tweeters and also the distance between the, the, the drivers and the sweet spots. The idea be, being um, to create a kind of um, arc in order to offer the same listening distance between the tweeter, the mid-range, um, low-mid bass driver and you uh, in order to have, mm -hmm. let's say, a kind of passive time alignment process at some point. Right, right. And then on the back of the speaker, you can see all the adjustments that you have um, with controlling those crossovers and the slope of those crossovers to kind of fine tune the speaker for the room. Um, and this is also part of the uh, the Evo edition, which has the electromagnet adjustment for the base on it. Was that that was right? Right, Nicholas? Yeah. yeah so you can really. Yeah. The idea is. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I mean, um, here uh, on the Grande Utopia, um, the idea is also to offer a speaker which is easier to integrate in the room, meaning that with the bass driver and the electromagnet technology, you can emulate different bass drivers just by uh, selecting a different value on the power supply that is powering the electromagnets. Uh, you can give more or less control of the mobile equipment depending mm -hmm. on room size and your room acoustics. So it's also a very interesting way to optimize the speaker integration in the room at some point. Yeah, just a tremendous speaker and what you can do with it and being able to adjust it like that is fantastic. Here's a, mm -hmm. uh, that room that Thibaut's in there. That's the ceiling and it's like a, yeah, it's like a wave. Beautiful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're just a interesting design. They had somebody help them out with that and build that room, a very well-known um, French company that does acoustics. And of course, yeah. you guys being name dealers, I had to take a picture of that, uh, the name statement equipment <laughs> and the Unity streamer that powers all that, which is just unbelievable. Uh, it's just a phenomenal facility, guys. You get a, to get a look at everything they have to offer. This was the training facility that we were in where they have a lot of their products on display. So now we're here, we get to this, this is the cabinet factory um, that we were able to go see. And 
some of the things that I want to show you in here, um, I mean, you see all the parts and pieces laid out. Everything starts from this this nice MDF material, and they have this machine that has five different axes wow. to send the, send the stuff through and cut it at just the right angle. So, and there's one guy's job is just to oversee all of that. And I mean, you walk around this cabinet factory and you see, you know, these, uh, the clamps, you know, like a, like, just like a, like a wood shop, you know, this stuff isn't like mass produced per se. It's all done by hand. So these are some of the, just the interesting, I mean, it was amazing to walk around the, one of my favorite machines that I never saw, uh, before, let me get to it here. Uh, this is just, just again, to show, wait, where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> To show you this, you know, one one person is sitting here just sanding this one piece. That's that's the job that that one person is doing with that cabinet. And you have all these shells around that everything gets built one thing at a time. Again, I mean, it's like somebody's basement, you know, working on a project, clamping things together, doing it the right way. Um, this is the machine. This is the uh, the wood veneer uh, machine. And basically, the top of this fills up like uh, like a hot balloon and helps press down and put the pressure evenly on that wood veneer as you lay it on top, as you can see him doing right there. So, you know, you ever, when somebody talks about these speakers have a wood veneer finish, you can really appreciate the, the what goes into actually putting that on to a speaker. It's, uh, it's, it's work. And there's our fearless leader, Bob. <laughs> Mr. Bob Cole, the woodworker himself. And I was speaking to him when I was talking about woodworking. If you you know he's building a kayak at the moment. So uh, he, he definitely is a, is a woodworker by trade as well. So after all these pieces get built, you see him kind of start going into the, into the priming and painting uh, portion of these speakers. And again, all handmade stuff. This is their job to polish this one piece like that's that's the job they're doing today they're, they're polishing these painted painted pieces um so just again to talk about the, the hand craftsmanship that goes into to making these speakers here's some of the the finished look right here again different colors that you can get available and you pretty much get these speakers in any color you want for the most part if you you know well, obviously is there a custom price for <laughs> for getting a custom paint job um see here oh this was cool so this was showing the difference between like some of your speakers have like the black speckled kind of finish and then you have speakers that have just a straight piano black finish and it the piano black if i remember right was obviously a lot harder to do because it shows imperfections way easier so the 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 quality control is a lot harder on just a pure jet black you know piano black finish there's some more finished products here uh, final inspection, you know, he's going over everything, checking it with the light, looking for any imperfections in the, in the paint before it goes out. And this is just, this is just one speaker. That's looks like, a, was that an Electra? Uh, looks like a 28, probably a 1028. Yeah. yeah. So just making sure everything is good to go out. Okay. And then uh, there we go. <laughs> um, on the way to the restaurant, I'll on the way to some yeah. restaurant to drink a bunch of wine and, you know, have a good time. So the trip was outstanding. Um, I can't, I can't uh, thank you guys again enough for that. That was really good. Thanks, Ali. Yeah, let me see if we got some uh, uh, some questions. I see um, coming through here. Oh, here you go. Can anyone tour the facility? Well, we do organize some tour for our partners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, where in France is Focal located? Uh, so you had the two shops, right? One was in Saint Etienne. Uh, was... Saint Etienne. Yeah. yeah. Saint say it again. I want to say it right. Say it again. <laughs> Saint Etienne. Saint Etienne. Okay. Yeah, perfect. near Lyon. That's yeah. Middle of France, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's near Lyon. The English version is Saint Etienne. So. Saint Etienne. <laughs> yeah, we're about about an hour and ten minutes southwest uh, of uh, of Lyon. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I remember that's that's where we landed. Yeah. Yeah. And the other one, the cabinet factory, is in Burgundy, uh, which, if you go to France, you have to visit for two reasons: our cabinet factory and the wine industry as well. Mm -hmm. um, there, uh, that one is about, I would say, eighty miles away from the Focal headquarters. 
Jay asks here, what is the difference between the F and the W cones? I have a pair of Aria 948s and they sound, they're amazing speakers. Tibo, you want to take that one? Yeah, yeah, I can take that one, sure. Um, so Nicolas was talking a lot about W uh, speakers, uh, W cone, sorry. Uh, so it's the, the philosophy, it's a bit similar. I mean, we still work on composite uh, structure. Uh, so we have the material in the middle that, so for W is going to be the foam. That's very light foam that helps for lightweight and damping. And we get the structural glass fiber on both sides of the sandwich. So flex will be a bit the same uh, in the structure. Um, but instead of having this foam, we have this layer of the, this flex layer that behaves a bit different. So uh, this, you, you know, it's a flex fiber I quite uh natural i mean it's like free it's not everything in one direction and it brings very nice damping and it gets this like um this nice i mean you you get warm some warmer feeling coming out of this kind of membrane what uh, i would say so you get so you get glass fiber on both sides so this will be the same on w and flex roughly and we change the core of the material and that's what bring this slight difference so you can you're gonna get a bit of more warmness, I would say, where W is uh, even more precise and ultra detailed. So that's, for me, that would be the main difference between those. Yeah, it is a, it is something when you hear them back and forth, there's certainly things about both that I like, but um, I guess I'm personally, I'm more of a W sandwich cone fan, um, but the flax is amazing. And there's things that, that, that it does that um, I do really like as well. But uh, here's a question, Chris. Have you incorporated anything into your headphone lineup from your speaker experience and research? Um, well, the, the fact is, is that uh, it's, it's an interesting question because it actually um, amplifies a lot of our company uh, model. Is that we, you know, we, we, you know, we have thirty-five people in our R and D department. Uh, Tebow, obviously, you know, being one of them, um, but we have different divisions. But we actually share techno, <clears throat> we share technology between all divisions. Um, so as an example, uh, you know, we, we launched our high-end headphones in, in 2016 mm -hmm. and the dome profile that, that, uh, we, we, uh, that we use in, in the Utopia, the Brillium, uh, or the Brillium Utopia, the uh, Stelia, and, and all of them is actually came from our car audio department um, from the inverted uh, K2 tweeter. So again, we, we, we share a lot of technologies all the way across, uh, you know, whether it be the W cone, the flax sandwich cone, uh, and, you know, and the aluminum magnesium uh, and beryllium inverted on Twitter. So technology is shared across the board. Yeah, that's yeah, the other way. From, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I would just say from an inside point of view in the r and I mean, we are all together. We have all the division uh, under, under the same roof. So we all took together between the divisions, headphone, car, uh, hi-fi. So of course, all the technology are going across and when we see any uh, technology break uh, in one division that can fit in another, then of course we will use experience and research job that's already done to integrate a new uh, kind of product and new divisions. Now, now on that note is that, you know, getting specifically into the headphone side is that um, because of our nearly, you know, at the time when we launched the headphones, we were nearly 40 years old. Um, but because of our nearly 40 years old of, of uh, uh, experience in the, in the hi-fi world is actually what incorporated us to, to introduce the first new technology into the headphone world in over 30 years, uh, you know, where we were the first company to put a full range near field open back speaker into a headphone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I guess the M design too, from the car stereo world too, like the M driver design right? Right, with the M profile. Yes. Yeah. So here's a, here's a fun question from uh, our buddy Judd. Hi, Judd. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. To the Focal team, what is your favorite song to demo on your speakers and why? <laughs> so, Nicholas, why don't you start? Yeah, what's your favorite song to demo? My favorite song to demo the speakers? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say for now... Um, I listen quite a lot of uh, Gogo -Go Penguin uh, Opopono mm -hmm. to fine tune speakers. It's a super nice piece of uh, jazz music uh, with piano and so on. Very 
well produced and recorded. So uh, interesting when uh, you want to look for details and so on. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, you got one for your for that. Like, oh, what's, man, uh, I, I always I'm, ask too, like, what's like the first one? Like, I always like, what, what's what's the first song you're gonna play on these speakers? You got these amazing speakers. What's the first tune you're playing? Well, I mean, there's so many good tracks out there. I know. And, and the <laughs> truth is, is that I, honestly, as as I go out and do the you know the trade shows and and so on like that, it it really varies on my audience. Um, you know, I can I can do something from a very light jazz to. Uh, probably one of my favorites that we do with, uh, especially our, our uh, you know, our 40th anniversary special 40th, was uh, was "Make Us Stronger" by Ghost Rider. Yeah, that I know that one. I heard that one. Amazing track. That's and a it, good one. It's everybody tapping their toes. So yes, it does. And guys, we have uh, Worldwide Stereo. We're partners with uh, Cobas, and we have a Worldwide Stereo playlist out there, uh, so you can check that out. And some of our favorite demo tracks and. Uh, and and I'm pretty sure make a makes a stronger is uh, is on that list if I'm not mistaken it did make it so uh, that's a good one but Tibo what's your what's your first tune you're playing on those big utopias it's back there really hard to say I'm changing all the time so it really depends what I want to listen to so yeah. in the tuning we use a lot of jazz songs also you know I mean for all details and and stuff but sometimes we really like to crank up a Rage Against the Machine stuff or anything so it varies a lot uh, it's, it's for sure. Really hard. Yeah, for sure. That's always a tough question. It's always a tough question. <laughs> and on uh, that note, uh, uh -huh. there, Adam, is that uh, we at Focal are also developing our own playlists uh, with Cobus as well. Oh yeah, that's right. You do. You have those. Uh, your partners with them on their Brand Society page, I believe it is. So Correct. you can yeah. check out uh, Focal's playlist on Cobus as well. So. In the Aria line, Mark says, I love the sound of my 936s, but why the vinyl sides are not so attractive? Why did you use vinyl finishes? And correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but that was, just, I mean, that's just a price point. I was just trying to hit a, a cheaper price point for the same quality speaker or uh, what, what else? What else was the reason for that? I guess talking about the dark walnut finish, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we actually offered three different finishes within, within the Aria as uh, we had the vinyl finish. Uh, we did have the walnut veneer. Um, and then we had the black lacquer as well available. And again, they were all at a uh, different price point. But yeah. Still had the same sound signature. Yeah. So Mark out there, I mean, there are other, there's two finishes that will use the, the prime walnut, as it's called, as opposed to the dark walnut. The prime walnut uses the real wood veneer, and then you have the, uh, the black finish. That's like a, a satin, like black finish, right? Yeah, I mean, well, it, it is a it is a black lacquer. Uh, so a black it, lacquer. It, it, yeah, it's it's basically uh, it's it's the same finish as that's on your on your vehicle. Right, right. So more finishes uh, available there. So yeah, uh, everybody out there, you have a few minutes left to uh, to get into the uh, giveaway here for the Focal Core system. Um, we're going to close that up in a few minutes. And lastly, I want to hit on uh, something new and. Uh, can you elaborate more? I, this guy must like be his ears must be like buzzing. Can you elaborate more on slate fiber technology and on the core line? Well, sleeper 1023. Here we go. I want to talk yeah. right now about your brand new lineup called the core line, the line that we're that we're giving away here in this in this uh, live show here. And it uses a brand new driver called slate fiber. Um, and I'd like uh, Tebow here if you can explain the offerings in Cora and talk about that new driver. Yeah, sure. So Cora, so the Cora line is made of uh, so many many speakers. So you're gonna have the bookshelves. Uh, you have two uh, full standard speaker, the H16, the A26, and we got AV offer also. So we complete this um, this offer with the A26D, which is D for Dolby, because there is Atmos speaker mm -hmm. built in that that uh, loudspeaker. And we got the center channel and surround channel as well. So all this range with this new uh, membrane technology called Slate Fiber. Um, so Slate Fiber, so the story of Slate Fiber is, so we have three key, let's say three, uh, maybe four, three key technology for the cone. So we got the W on the top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, then we got flax. And uh, until now, we got this polyglass technology, which was which was cellulose uh, cone with some glass uh, microbolts on it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got nice, also nice damping and stiffness with this material. 
and uh, we were outsourcing this uh, material, this membrane, this last year's, and we wanted to bring back um, this membrane technology and this uh, this uh, the, the way to build it in our factory. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're some looking for something quite new and even yeah better than polyglass. Problem with this kind of um, material in this price point. So yeah, problem would be the price point definitely because we use it at the entry range. Yeah. So we found these interesting materials, which is made of carbon fibers inside. So it's like random carbon fiber, and they are all uh, put in together with a nice uh, thermoplastic uh, material that put it together. It's thermoplastic polymer. Mm -hmm. Um, so then we still the same. We have the good matching. We have the stiffness uh, bring with the carbon fiber. It's really amazing. We, we got better level of stiffness that we used to have with polyglass. Yep. And we got that plastic material that put everything together and bring the damping. And everything is very controlled in terms of uh, weight. So we, in terms of weight, we're in the same target as what we used to say we, we used to have with previous materials. So we are good and we are able to build it in Saint Etienne here in our factory. So that's why we're really proud of it. And in terms of sounds, it's really different from polyglass. I mean, it brings, I mean, we, we level up the, the, the previous polyglass definitely. So that's what's making it interesting. So I have one comb actually here. So that's Ooh, how it looks go. like when it's just out of our uh, process in the factory. So that's just the slate fiber there. Does that does that have the uh, the glass on top and bottom yet? Yeah. Uh, no. No. There is no. So there is no glass fiber on it. It's just carbon fiber that you can see. You can. I don't know if it's easy to see, but yeah. if that's like natural looks, you know, like random uh, uh, fibers, and everything is. So you get layer of uh, thermoplastic, and it's yeah. all crunched together. That's amazing. Yeah. And so it's so not the exactly whole... a sandwich, but it's composite as you have two materials together. Yeah, and you got. I mean, this the, the core line was a replacement again for the chorus line. So basically, in your in your home speaker lineup, you have the core line, and then you go to the aria line, and then above that is everything that's going to have you know W sandwich cones potentially. But you have the contas and the sopras, and then the grand utopias or the utopia line, excuse me, from there. So the core line is kind of the uh, your starter home audio line uh, exactly. for indoor speakers. But a good it, start. <laughs> it's a, really oh, good it's. Start. <laughs> Guys, if, if you haven't checked out my review on the entire Focal Chorus system, go over to YouTube and check that out because it, I, and I use, keep using the word, but it freaked me out how good the Atmos effect is from those 826Ds. I hooked them yeah. up and I just played music out of them. I didn't have any, anything else hooked up. I just had the Dolby Atmos speakers engaged and literally sound was dancing on the ceiling. And it was, it was really cool. So, and there's like a, I guess call it like a waveguide kind of how, yeah, how that, that's built on the top there i think you have a sample of that show the folks that so <laughs> yeah, you that's see what's there in you go. the box yeah so you got the driver here and yep. you, also, you have this really well engineered web guide here that really spots the ceiling and goes down to you here so it means so the interesting thing is that during the development of this we just turn on these features we don't play the front and it's really Weird because you have the speaker yeah. in front of you, but you have nothing coming from the front. It's right. only from the ceiling. So that was the, the really cool thing. And actually, so we have specs coming from Dolby to design this kind of thing. We are in the license, so we can do we cannot oh. do everything we want. It's guided by yeah, there are some rules there. And in the interesting thing is that we push the rules. Actually, we are when we compare to Dolby expectation, we are two to three times more performant than what they expect in terms of insulation, especially in terms yeah. of insulation from what's firing up to what you can feel coming directly from the speaker in front of you with yeah. that thing. So that's make the performance, I mean, the feeling even better there. Yeah, and let's not forget, I mean, the, the cool thing with those speakers, and I've set up two systems now. Again, the core line is new, so I'm sorry, only two, but I'm getting there. I'll get more. Don't worry. <laughs> um, you can set those core 826Ds up in the front and in the back of the room. And now yeah, you can have front sure. Atmos speakers as well as rear Atmos speakers just yeah. from these four towers. So it's really opened the doors for people to get into a four, you know, Atmos speaker style system without cutting holes in the ceiling. 
Um, just make sure you have a ceiling. No, no right. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that you have have a ceiling. Here's a good question here to, that somebody has the the uh, the chorus system. What are the two best small speakers to add to a system for Atmos? I have the core chorus seven hundreds. Um, well, again, if you can get wiring into the ceiling, I'd say going with something from Focal in the 100 or 300 series line, the 100 line would probably match better because they use the same driver materials in the 100 as they did the chorus line. So that would make a lot of sense. Um, if you can't get anything into the ceiling, uh, there are other avenues I think that you can go here, um, but they do make smaller speakers. That's another side of Focal. They have these small dome speakers and they have the, uh, the SIB speakers, like the little bookshelf wall mountable kind of style speakers. Um, and that can help you out. And if you put them maybe at the front of the room and, and maybe angle them down or something to get, if you didn't want to do anything in the ceiling. Um, but any plans guys for on the, on the, on this, putting you on the spot here, sorry, on the core line to make just a, just a topper that could go on to an older system, just that Atmos piece. We don't have a specific one in the core line. Um, and generally you want something that's small, so you're not going to bring an eight to an eight or six, sorry, uh, the bookshelf speaker. I mean, it looks pretty big. So what I would recommend is what you said. So we did pretty interesting setup with the dome, especially with the dome uh, speaker there, which is small enough and, and yeah. it does the job really nicely. If you yeah. don't want to put holes in your ceiling. Yeah, the dome is nice because the way you can mount it, you could probably mount it from the ceiling and then it, it moves like a softball. You could you could pivot yeah. it on it and really angle it down, which would be nice. So that could that could work well for you there. Exactly. Uh, let's see here. Cyber dome sounds like, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nicholas, what time is it in France? <laughs> no, it's okay. uh, almost, uh, almost 7 p.m. now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, almost seven o'clock. Good, uh, good six-hour yeah. difference there. So, looking at our time here. All right, I think we uh, everything should be closed. Let me check with uh, with uh, Amanda and Emily here. Make sure that we're everything has been closed off here, so I can generate a random winner here. Let me just take a look here. Whoops. All right. All right, I think we are ready to select our winner here for the Focal free system. Again, reminder, I'll bring that back up again, what you will be winning here. And that is the, the 5.1.2 system from Focal. And that's the 826Ds up front with the 806 bookshelves, the chorus center, and matching subwoofer. So, yeah, Jennifer, <laughs> I was going to say, drum roll, come on. A little drum roll, please. A little drum roll. Here we go. Here we go. And let me randomize this. Our winner is Michael Binnerman from South Carolina. So we will be reaching out to you, Michael. Congratulations so much on winning that system. Uh, we will be reaching out to you and give you all the details so we can uh, get that out to you. Wow. That's one lucky guy right there. That's one heck of a system to win. Let's see here. Yes, big drum roll. Everybody's <laughs> saying me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, let me take that screen away there. Again, congratulations, Michael. That's a wonderful system. If you have any questions about that, you can always reach out to us for uh, uh, hookup questions or um, you know, set up best placement, those kinds of things. Uh, we're here to help you out either with email um, or you can call us and we can give you a hand in terms of setting that up in case you have any questions here. Well, guys, um, I don't want to say bye, but we're getting to that point. I want to thank uh, everybody from Focal here for being on the show. Um, wonderful speaker line. Thank you so much for the trip last year. Guys, we'll have most of this stuff, well, actually pretty much all of this stuff on display. Again, if you have questions, we're here for you virtually right now to help you out with, uh, with anything. Um, so I want to take one last look, see if there's any questions coming in that we didn't get to. If we didn't get to your question, uh, that's, that's okay. We're going to compile all that together and we'll get back to you. And then you can join us tomorrow night for our happy hour. It starts at five o'clock Eastern standard time, uh, right here on Facebook and YouTube. I'll have some buddies from worldwide stereo on, and we'll can kind of continue this speaker conversation and, and, and talk more about it. Thank you everybody for joining me, Nicholas, Chris, Tebow. It's been awesome. Thank you. You guys are always there for my support. Thank you. All right. Really yeah, thanks.
All right, friends. Thank you so much for watching. This is Adam with Worldwide Stereo, reminding you guys to listen to music every day. So long. <laughs>